Hey there, this video we are going to see Apex Security. It is a series of a uh, uh, couple of videos uh, we will be seeing related to Apex Security. This video will give you an introduction about Apex Security. So probably from Salesforce, you might have aware of, uh, you know, securities, right? That is related to object level security, field level security, and uh, uh you know record level security right so probably as an admin we will be doing this configuration in the ui right so the record level security we will be doing with uh, sharing settings owd as far as object level security is concerned we will be doing it in the profile level right similarly field level securities can be done in the profile level so when you are writing Apex code as a developer, you have to make sure that your security is being respected. The security which is configured by the system admin in the front end should be respected. Because when developers compromise this security in their code, then the sensitive data might be exposed. So the developers should ensure that they don't expose sensitive data which is controlled in the UI through admin configurations. So why this particular discussion coming into the picture? This discussion coming into the picture because Apex generally runs in the system context mode. There are two types of mode. One is the user context mode and another one is the system context mode. Whatever the Apex code you are going to write, the Apex code will generally run in the system context mode. So when it is running in the system context mode, it won't respect the securities you have applied. It won't respect the object level security. It won't respect the field level security. It won't respect the record level security. So when you are writing a code in real time, 100% you have to make sure that you are covering the security in your Apex code. As a beginner, when we are writing the code, we won't take that much you know, importance. We won't give that much importance to writing the code that covering the security part, right? For example, if you are going to work in your team, you are going to build a product and the product will be available in the uh, Apex stage. This is the plan. If that is the case, you will be building applications. Sometimes you may write Apex code. So before going into app exchange, your code will be reviewed by Salesforce, right? So when there is a code which is written compromising the security, the code will not pass the security review. So it is highly recommended your code should have the security coverage, right? It should cover the security part. Tools like, for example, Code Analyzer, right? And uh, PMD. PMD is generally used in the Visual Studio Code, right, as an extension. These tools are generally a static code analyzers. These tools can be used for security issues or any code issues, right? Especially the security issues can be easily identified through this analyzer. Before you are submitting your code for App Exchange for security review, you need to submit the code analyzer report also to the security, right? Security review. So that's the reason whenever you are writing an Apex code, since the Apex will run in the system context mode, you have to make sure as a developer that there is no data leak. Okay, fine. Let's move on. So this is what I have discussed, right? There are two modes. One is the user mode and another one is the system context mode. Let's look at the system mode first. You are writing an Apex class. You are writing Apex trigger. You are writing web services. These entities won't respect the sharing rules or this won't respect the security. For example, CRUD permission, right? Create, read, update, delete permissions on top of the object or field level security and sharing rule not enforced by default. So whenever you're writing an Apex class, by default, it will run in the system mode. These classes, triggers, and app services won't respect any of the securities you have applied in the front end through configuration. Right? If that is the case, high chances are there, leakage might be there. 
on the other hand if you look at the user mode by default for example execute anonymous right you will be most of the times when learning the development you will be executing the uh, code through execute anonymous from the execute anonymous right the anonymous window the anonymous window generally run in the user mode this will respect crud fls and sharing rules so all these entities will respect the sharing uh, rule as well as the object level security and field level security standard controllers or there is an standard lightning form components or there is a lightning data service endpoint all these will respect crud fls sharing enforced right so most of the times our customization will be through apex classes so we need to take care we are writing a code in such a way that it respects object level security it respects field level security and unnecessarily it should not show any of the records outside to the users those who don't have access especially that is called you know record level security so in the next video will show you a problem of writing apex code in the system mode and will explain you the importance of record level security if you are interested to learn salesforce visit aj skill development website there you can find our course curriculum and you can come to know about the list of courses we are offer we are offering salesforce administrator and salesforce development courses to know about us and the team, you can visit our About Us section. This is an organization we are doing at Salesforce training from 2018, and we have trained and guided 2,000 plus candidates so far. And if you also want to know about our placement assistance, visit our placement assistance section where you can find the list of people and the category. You can see the list of people who got uh, trained and placed from our site. You can also visit their LinkedIn pages to get to know about our training and also the feedback from the relevant trainees okay and also if you want to do the course inquiry click on contact us you will see the form you can fill the form and submit the inquiry our team will get back to us thank you